All right, looks like roadkill. No, it's not. Oh. Hi everyone, JJ here. Welcome back. Well, for years, Elon Musk has been saying that FSD Tesla's full self-driving, supervised at the moment, will be able to go coast to coast in the US without touching the wheel once. He said that way back now. He said that by the end of 2017, and I'll put the clip in here when I come to edit it. Essentially, November or December of this year, we should be able to go from, yeah, from, all the way from a parking lot in California to a parking lot in New York. No controls touched at any point during the entire journey. We're now in 2025 and various people have tried doing this. The latest Tesla influences and it turns out that they had a crash just 60 miles into it, driving from San Diego to Florida. So it's not off to a good start and they're documenting it. We will have a look at the video of what happened. It was pretty nasty indeed. They're okay though. And Electric says here, just from some backstory, the idea was to live stream or film a full unedited drive coast to coast with the vehicle driving itself at all times. We are in 2025. Tesla has never made that drive. This is what happened. So there was something on the road up ahead. They did have plenty of time to stop. The car just did not seem to see it. The software did not seem to see it. And they're talking about it being looking like roadkill, but it turned out to be a big a steel ramp that probably fell off a truck and they hit it straight on. The car did not do anything. And he obviously trying not to touch the wheel from coast to coast was not keen to take over. They did have plenty of time. Let's see. Oh, we got a uh, something on the road. Here. Yeah, we sure do. All right, looks sure. like roadkill. No, it's not. Oh, sh that was a hard hit and they were surprised by it but you see there's a clear road there the car could have changed lanes had it seen it uh -oh. that is not roadkill um. so they got actually got airborne there and you can see some of the damage i'll, I'll show some of the damage they've been putting part one to part five at the moment up on youtube and i'll put a link to this video to the channel there so you can see more of it they did have a fix we'll have a look at that what actually happened oh my god um um are you okay are you okay i'm okay i'm okay so in the rest of this video they go back and check on the road to see what it was they get it to clear it off the road which is a good idea and this is what fell off the car i think and so that that is used later on in the next video we can see that they do fix the car. They drive to the next town. They manage to get it going. They reset the Tesla. And this is what happened when they actually went to a mechanic and lifted it up. And there was a fix that they did. There was welding involved. It's going up on the hoist. You can see some damage there. Oh, man. We smacked Skip ahead it. to see what we've do got. No. <laughs> yeah. do, do that again. What's oh, going on? Oh, my gosh. See, something came yeah. loose there. Yes. Wow, we are very lucky. It's okay. We only drove it another three, four hundred miles. So they've drove three or four hundred miles after that crash. I didn't see them look under the car at the time, but there was some damage there, and they managed to to get some welding going. It didn't look like the electric motor was damaged. So a dangerous situation, and the upshot is that Tesla really failed. The FSD failed to avoid that big object. Dan O'Dowd said it here. Yes, he's a chief critic of Tesla FSD, so he noted something here. This influencer, Beta Tesla and Josh West 247, set out on a journey from San Diego, California to Jacksonville, Florida. FSD couldn't even get out of San Diego County before crashing their brand new Model Y. It was just 2.45% of the 2,300 mile journey. So really 58 miles from their starting point was when this happened. So the, the dream of coast to coast without touching the wheel is not happening just yet. I mean, you can be critical of this saying this, if there was a human driver, they would have had accidents. And I think there was another vehicle that was parked up ahead of them before they got this off the road. 
So maybe it happened not too long before this, but you know something fell off a truck. But these things happen. It's unexpected. This is the point. You can make excuses for it. Here's another obvious one that I found. FSC drove me onto the sidewalk tonight and scraped my rear diffuser. Let's see what happens here. It's silent. It's a left only lane. See that left only keeps going straight ahead over the curb. Bang. So there's another fairly basic thing. I mean, it was undercover there. You can see undercover, but the road markings clearly marked there. So things like that still happening. So it seems like they've got quite a long way to go before you know fixing this problem completely. And again, I've saw this. Tesla again has the highest accident rate of any auto brand. Tesla cars are once again involved in the most accidents according to a study by Lending Tree Insurance, the insurance company. It found that Tesla drivers are involved in more accidents than drivers of any other brand. Some of these accidents involve Tesla's self-driving system. Nationally, Tesla drivers had 26.67 accidents per thousand drivers. This is up from 23.54. It says the Ram and Subaru brands are again among the most accident prone. Ram had 23.15 per thousand vehicles and Subaru had 22.89. So well up there. They analyzed the 30 brands with the most inquiries in this period. The study recognizes drivers based on inquiries made for those brands. Does the Tesla self-driving feature cause accidents? They're asking. Tesla Autopilot and Advanced Driver Assistance System was released in 2015. And as we saw, Elon Musk making statements about the coast-to-coast -coast travel. It's going to be possible really not long after that. The first fatal crashes involving Tesla Autopilot occurred less than one year later. The fatal crashes attracted attention from the U.S. government agencies, including the National Transport Safety Board, so these things are ongoing and court cases are starting to come up from around 2019. So these things tend to take a long time to get through court. We've seen one case involving autopilot, that one in Florida where Tesla was charged with damages of nearly $250 million and they're appealing that of course, but these things working their way through courts, there will, no doubt there will be more. This is analysis concluded that Tesla autopilot death rate is higher than the reported estimates. In addition to fatal crashes, there have been many non-fatal ones. And we just saw one, right? The incidents were caused by the ADAS failing to recognize other vehicles, insufficient autopilot driver engagement, and it has argued poor operational designs. So these guys that are in this, the influencers were shocked by this. They, they were pretty shaken up, as you would be. The car actually got airborne. It was going at speed, did not slow down, did not swerve, just and it went flying. And he took the wheel and it looked dangerous, and they were fairly freaked out by the incident. And finally, this here, Elon Musk, is he already giving up on Tesla's robo-taxi? So this is related to investment. This is the Motley Fool, if you're familiar with that service. They have a stock advisory service. But they say here, Tesla CEO Elon Musk sees Optimus reaching 80% of Tesla's value in the future. The response to the June robo-taxi launch in Austin has been mixed, and the robo-taxi market is huge, but competition is heating up. So this article talks about how Elon is pivoting to robots. Not pivoting, but pivoting his rhetoric. Whenever something isn't going well in one department, he tends to draw attention, investors' attention, influencers' attention, retail investors' attention to something else. So the robo-taxi launch was one thing. He's always taken the attention off that. And he's put it onto Optimus saying that it will be worth 80% of the value. Tesla and Elon Musk have spent years hyping the company's robo-taxis leading up to the autonomous electric vehicles launch in Austin. So he has talked about this for years, really hyping it up, saying, you know, next year, next year. And they really had to start rolling out robo-taxis or it would be getting super embarrassing. If you fast forward a year, a little, maybe a year, maybe a year and three months, uh, at, but next year for sure, we will have over a million robo taxis on the road. And he did stake the company on it, saying that Tesla's pretty much worth zero unless they get autonomy rolling. Focus is, is solving full self driving. So, um, yeah. 
Right. And that, that, that's essential. And like, that's really the difference between Tesla uh, being worth a lot of money and being worth basically zero. Now, of course, he's saying robots will be the biggest product ever in the world. They say here, since Tesla's launch of a small robotaxi fleet in Austin, which expanded from an initial number of 10 to 20 cars in June to 30 by late August, Musk has been rather quiet about the new business he has. So the fanfare has gone away. They had a show of getting Tesla influences. It's really not expanding quickly there. They've expanded the geofenced area, but pretty quiet about what's going on. And then that previous video I did about the three accidents they had in July that they're not reporting very much on. There's no narrative. They did report the accidents. And so this is the point here. He also made a statement earlier this month that suggests he's more focused on Tesla's next big thing, implying the hype around robotaxis could be a thing of the past. In a post on a social media platform, Musk said that 80% of Tesla's value will be Optimus, referring to the company's autonomous robot. Well, I mean, you can walk and chew gum at the same time. You could be talking about both these things, but he does tend to deflect attention. I have noticed that things aren't going well. Promises, promises they talk about here. The promise of autonomous robotaxis and the enthusiasm and confidence in the technology, but being reasonably quiet lately. So they kind of conclude in this article at this point, it's too soon to judge the impact the robotaxi will have, but it will most certainly take longer to move the revenue needle than Musk has forecast. Meanwhile, statements like the one above on Optimus may help pump the stock, but they ultimately do a disservice to investors. That statement being about the 80% revenue from robots eventually. Currently, Tesla trades at a sky-high price-to-earnings ratio close to 200. I think it's well over 200 now. And analysts expect both revenues and profits to fall this year. Musk may have more bold predictions up his sleeve, they say, but at some point, Tesla is going to have to back them up with real business results. At its current valuation, the trajectory and risk-reward for Tesla stock doesn't seem worth it. So that's just one opinion. I don't have an opinion on the stock. I don't. I'm not a financial advisor. These people are allowed to do that. I'm not allowed to give any kind of advice. But I would agree with this in terms of their metrics are sky high because they're not making the revenue from these future things that Elon Musk has promised for quite some time. The revenue's just not there. It looks like it's quite far away for robots in any sense. And the same with robo-taxis, although they are on the roads with the safety monitor. But, you know, they have to, to justify the, the market valuation, they're going to have to start ramping up revenue. The selling of cars still accounts for the vast majority of it. And that has been falling, declining, so not going so well. Let me know what you think of this. Is FSD ready to roll? Do you think that it's got a while to go yet? Let me know in the comments what you think. I know you will. People have an opinion on this, how FSD is going. Is it nearly ready? It certainly doesn't seem ready for that coast to coast. I'm sure others will try it, but it is a long way. And these things can just come out of the blue like that. And it could not handle it, that software. Right now, I'm going to put a related video on screen. Do go and see that now if you want to. And also a subscribe link. And do join the channel as well. I've been doing more political type videos on here, which is not great with advertisers. So do join the channel. You get you usually get videos about up to seven or eight hours before they get public, by the way. I don't say that very often. And priority reply to comments as well. So do join the channel if you're interested in doing that. Thanks for watching this one, and I'll see you in the next one.